This week on The Hotel Inspector, a B&B that's facing the final curtain. Cheap, gay B&B in London. It's <laughs> as if I'm running a home of disrepute. There's a point where shabby chic becomes shitty chic and this is it. Oh, God! The little bathroom, the shower stinks. In the heart of Greenwich, on the south bank of the River Thames, lies a small but quirky B&B run by actor and part-time hotelier Robert Gray. He started the business to provide an income between acting jobs. Being an actor, of course, it's difficult to make ends meet. Um, running the bed and breakfast sort of is our day-to-day -day bread and butter and, and living. Five years ago, Robert transformed his home into a three-bedroom B&B, but it's starting to feel its age. I sort of decorated on the sort of shabby chic school of uh, interior design, and, and now it's been going for a few years, and I think that the chic bit's slightly gone, and I think we're looking slightly shabby, so I think I need a facelift. Juggling, acting, and running a guest house has taken its toll, and Robert's run out of ideas. Hello, St Alphage Bed and Breakfast. If you're doing a play for a long time, you get the director who comes in and gives you some guidance. Running a bed and breakfast is just me, and um, there's no director coming in. Without help, St Alphage's could be left facing its final swan song. It's hugely important that this thing keeps going, and if I was, was to lose the bed and breakfast, I, I don't know what I'd do. I, it's, it's, it's a sort of way of life now, and um, I, I, I know I'd be devastated. In the hope of injecting new life into St Alphage's, Roberts called on expert hotelier and renowned troubleshooter Ruth Watson. She'll assess the B&B and come up with a plan to keep it performing to a full house. Like the madcap garden, but I don't know how you get in. There's no sign. But before she's even set foot inside, she's come across a problem. I think this must be the entrance, but it's so overgrown, it's completely mad. I think this is foliage gone crazy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm in. This is the most extraordinary entrance I've ever seen. Having braved the jungle outside, Ruth sits Robert down to find out why he's asked for her help. This is the most bijou b, b I've ever been in. Yes, it's fairly Lilliputian, I think. <laughs> how many rooms have you actually got? We've got three, two doubles and a single. So how seriously do you take this? Are you an actor or are you a B&B &B owner? One feeds the other. I don't think I could be an actor anymore um, unless I had the B&B in. How um, much was your turnover last year on the B&B? I don't know, to be quite honest. Um, right. I... If you don't know your turnover, I know damn well you're not going to know what your occupancy rate is, are you? Not in the slightest, no. I, I don't do it um, to uh, make huge amounts of money. I do it as, as something to do. I work terribly hard at it. I certainly give value for money. I'm not going to ask you how. Um... <laughs> Before arriving at St Alphage's, Ruth conducted an online search for the B&B &B and didn't like what she found. There's one thing that I found utterly loathsome. Right. Far away. It says cheap gay B&B &B in central London. Now, if ever there was a more tacky message than that, <laughs> I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find it. I mean, fine, you know, you may be gay, but in effect, what you were saying to me, um, being straight, was you were challenging me. You know, I, I was thinking, do I want to go there? Am I going to get as warm a welcome as if I was gay? Yes, that's, that's a very good point. That, you know, yes. and you're not averse to having straight people here at all, are you? We've had one or two, yes. Ruth heads off to inspect the rest of the B&B, &B, starting with the yellow room, a double. 
this is a pretty little room. It's got two windows, which is lovely, so it's very light. Yeah, it's, it's charming. I mean, Robert's got a lot of style. But the big problem is it's not en suite, and the idea of getting up in the middle of the night to have to go to the bathroom, or even in the morning, I think this is where things start to fall down. Next door, the green room, the B&B's only single. Well, this is obviously a single room with a single bed. Incredibly dark colouring, this dark green. Uh, not my taste at all. Both rooms share one bathroom. Well, this is quite a decent sized bathroom, but it does have to look after two rooms. And for me, where it all goes horribly wrong is the really monkey shower curtain against the window. Paint peeling. There's a point where shabby chic becomes shitty chic, and this is it. Finally, the blue room, the only bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. Aha! What very pretty wallpaper. Very charming. But is the bathroom hiding a dark secret? smell. Seriously, something has died in there that is deeply unpleasant. His shower cubicle may have caused a stink, but it's Ruth's remarks about the website which have put Robert's nose out of joint. I, I think I'm a bit nervous now, really. Saying I, I run a, a cheap gay B&B it sounds as if we're running a knocking shop here. But how will Robert cope when the world's smallest ensuite tips Ruth over the edge? Oh, Rob, come on. Come on. This is silly. I'm going. This is St Alphages, a three-bedroom guest house in the heart of Greenwich. Five years ago, actor Robert Gray opened his home to paying guests to supplement his income. Since then, his formerly stylish B&B has gone from chic to shabby. There's a point where shabby chic becomes shitty chic, and this is it. In desperation, he's called on the hotel inspector for direction. Ruth has already established that the B&B's frontage needs work. A lack of signage and a jungle of plants are giving guests a terrible first impression. I think this is foliage gone crazy. <laughs> Inside, a shortage of bathrooms means guests are forced to share. Even worse, the hotel's only ensuite has a mysterious stench that's enough to turn the toughest stomach. Something has died in there that is just evil. Quite eye-watering, actually. Oh. After her investigations upstairs, Ruth heads to St Alphage's basement. Guests share a table in the open-plan kitchen, turning mealtimes into something of a performance for Robert. I have to tell you, that's a great aroma that is coming up the stairs. Well, that's very sweet of you no, to really, say No, really, it so. does. Thank it's you. a good, 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 good smell. smell. Why not take a pew? I will. Is this freshly squeezed orange juice, or...? Yes, it is. It's freshly squeezed and straight out of a carton. Good for you for admitting it. Robert prides himself on his full English, but will Ruth decide it's really the full ticket? Now, would you like some toast or croissant? Um, toast would be lovely, yes, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I think this is very nice home-cooked breakfast. Um, I think it's very nicely presented. I like having a flat mushroom, the bacon, good back bacon. I think this is perfectly acceptable and I like the presentation a lot. Oh, well, thank you. Robert's culinary skills are deemed to be up to scratch, but can the same be said of his business acumen? Having admitted to a surprising lack of interest in the B&B's finances, Ruth is now intrigued by the apparent lack of an office. <laughs> this is called organisation. It's a hellhole! It's awful! Gee. Right, you let this business happen to you, don't you? I think that's right, yes. Mm. Yeah. 
the question is, how much do you want to create business? Well, I, I just want to do something sort of well, small and well, I think. Uh, many, many years ago, I had an awful sort of breakdown and uh, right. I became very wealthy and I had lots of toys and all sorts of... The breakdown stuff. before you were wealthy or after you were wealthy? Um, after I was wealthy. Right. So I made lots of money and money just does, doesn't do it for me anymore. I have a sort of money phobia now. I'm not yeah. really interested. Yeah. I understand where you're going from and I think at a certain time of life also that you make a decision about that. But I do think that we could get a little bit more coming in for you, which would perhaps make the comfort zone a yeah, little squishier, yes. you know. And I'm all for any suggestions. OK. And as for this, if you can assure me that you've never double booked, that everybody has arrived, you've known they're arriving, and all that kind of thing, then... We've never had a double booking. OK. Let's just shut the doors on the bloody thing. I think that's marvellous. <laughs> Nevertheless, Robert's haphazard methods of accountancy are troubling Ruth. She's not convinced he takes the B&B seriously, so she's arranged to meet his best friend, Julia, to find out more about him. Julia helps out at the B&B, standing in for Robert when he's away acting. And as a fellow thespian, she understands both sides of his character. So do you think that Robert's strengths lie more towards the B&B or more towards the acting? The acting is, is, is somehow bigger, mm. but the B&B is... A, it keeps the wolf from the door. I was slightly suspicious that Rob was sort of playing at it rather than taking it seriously. But you're convincing me, and I think Rob is convincing me, that actually being a b, &B owner is something of some significance to Absolutely. him. Absolutely. It satisfies some part of his soul. And I think it creates an awful lot of interest for him. Yeah. And often as an actor, months can go by where there isn't a sniff. And if you haven't got other projects going on, then it can be very soul-destroying, actually. And to have this ongoing interest where there's always the potential on another level of things happening is, is very important, I think. You've helped convince me, as, along with himself, that he's actually serious about it. Good. Yeah. Because yeah. he is, I think. Yeah. After a thorough inspection, Ruth is ready to deliver her critique of the B&B. Her first concern is the first impression. I want to start at the beginning, and that was my struggle to get to your front door. I'm being quite serious. If I had been trying to struggle with a big case or had been raining or whatever, I actually would have been really pissed off by the time I'd actually got in. I think something needs to be done. Do you think a haircut? A little bit of a haircut. Just a parting of the wave. The other problem, of course, is the signage. Now, mm. I, I appreciate you don't want to have a big thing up there saying Robert's B&B. But would you be agreeable to having some, just yes, something yes. that says, yeah, you've arrived, yes. you know, you have got the yes. right house and this is the right yes. door? And it's not just the B&B's frontage. The website's polarising tagline could well confuse potential guests. I really think that cheap gay B&B in London is tacky. Mm. It doesn't actually reflect your character mm. at all or what you're really going to expect here. Mm. No, I think it's a few years old and I'm sure people update their websites quite often, don't um, they? Well, on a monthly basis, quite a lot Do of they people. Really? Well, yes, certainly not. Website aside, Ruth wants Robert to think bigger when it comes to marketing and has a suggestion that should play to his strengths. One of the things that I think could bring you in at least double the business you're getting, mm. which wouldn't be a frightening sum and I don't think would mm. give you a lot of stress, would be to get you into some guides mm. that are very idiosyncratic and which like the small operator, they like the charm and the individuality of places. Mm. It can't do you any harm. No. One other idea I'd like to throw at you. How would you feel about offering for tourists that you, you get quite a few of, um, a service that was actually to do with your acting ability and your knowledge of Greenwich and providing a guided tour right. of Greenwich or the environs? Well, that's a very good idea, I think. Very good. At present, both the yellow room and the small green room share one bathroom. But Ruth has come up with a dramatic solution. The single room, I think, is fairly oppressive. The little yellow Victoriana room, I think, is really charming, very light, very pretty, but they both have that problem about 
shared bathroom. Shared bathroom, bathroom. Yeah. If we took out the wall between the single room and the yellow room and made that a much larger, more attractive room, right. not only could you get the same rate as if you were being able to hire out those both rooms at the same time, right. I think you could probably get a little more and certainly in season. that would be the Rolls-Royce room. That would well. be the Rolls-Royce room, absolutely, with the big bathroom. I think that's a splendid idea. Well, let's do it. But the problems with the bathrooms don't stop there. I'm building up to the real whipping. Right, I can't wait. The little bathroom, major, major problem. Mm. The shower stinks. Right. It is. What's it, what's it stink of? Well, something dead, dying, rotten or revolting. I mean, it's been scrubbed from top to bottom. I'd like you to go up and but have it, a I look, know, because I, I, I tell you I what, did I smell didn't it. use it, because no, I opened so, the door and, and it was it, like, it's, it's, Ugh! Yeah. I think it's fairly obvious that we can get Robert some more business just by making the bedrooms en suite, helping sort out the website as well and putting up a sign and perhaps reducing some of this undergrowth would help as well. But the big thing for me is that whilst Robert puts on a great show and it's his, it's his natural personality coming out, he does have to realise the customers need a good seat as well. Upstairs, Robert is understandably anxious to discover the source of the terrible smell. Oh. It smells of feet. It does smell of rugby socks. I think it was this product I used. Best endeavours gone totally wrong and bowled out by the hotel inspector. Hell hath no fury like a puff to scorn, I think. Ruth has left Robert three key issues to deal with. First, she wants him to get his house in order. He must tackle the overgrown jungle outside the front door and put signage in place. He must also update his website and get rid of the cheap gay B&B &B tag that could be putting people off. Second, she wants Robert to market the B&B &B by applying to be in a good guidebook and offering his guests tours, making the most of his acting ability and his knowledge of Greenwich. And finally, Ruth wants to combine the yellow and green rooms into one with sole use of the large bathroom. This could attract more guests and enable Robert to charge more. A few days later, Robert drafts in Julia to help him tidy up the garden at the front of the B&B. &B. Where should we start? Well, I think what we do is that's what the offending um, article, well, the gonna, olive tree. Should we but move it or should I we... think move it, don't yes, you think, do. sort yeah. of thing. So we'll do that and we'll just break this over to you there. Very Can good. you just pull it yep. to you at that? Marvellous. If we do a little bit of trimming here, yes. would you like to do that? I'd love to. And then I'll just attend to the pussy willow. Can I be quite ru yes, ruthless? Yes, you can be ruthless, yes. Ruthless. How oh, wonderful. <laughs> Have you got any rue, Robert? No. Ugh. Yuck. Are you quite comfortable sitting there? Well, I think I am, actually. I think you're doing such a splendid job. Don't go for the ivy, though. Come here. I tell you what, I should be paid a lot of money for doing this. You could get a gardener in. Well, she can get in now. She certainly can, darling. I think that's fantastic. That's very good. Marvellous. It's a bit too smart for me, really. Yes, it'll soon get shabby again. Don't worry about it. Ruth has asked Robert to market St Alphages by getting into a good guidebook. She has suggested the Special Places to Stay series, which focuses on original accommodation run by interesting people. But competition is fierce, and Robert must apply to be featured. He'll have to impress them if he's to gain a place. And action. Right, Julia, let's do it. OK. Um, thank you very much for letting me uh, sort of audition for your um, book. And uh, the reason I think that, uh, sorry, I'll start again. Julia and I, we're actors, we're fond of people, we're interested in people, and we do care. We're very small, but we pack a big punch. So please do come and stay here and see if we're worthy of being in your book. Bless you. Fantastic. A few weeks later, Ruth returns to Greenwich to find out how Robert's been getting on. First, she wants to establish why he hasn't put up any signage. 
Well, I can see Rob has done nothing about his signage. You still don't know this is a bed and breakfast and that this is the front door to it. But what he has done is he's pruned his bushes. You can actually see the front door and get to it as well, which is marvellous. Full marks for that. Ruth, how lovely to see you. Hi, good to see you too. And, and what an improvement. Yes, yeah. we have trimmed. Yes, how marvellous to be able to actually get to the front door. <laughs> Ruth's biggest concern was the lack of bathrooms at St Alphages. She had suggested knocking two rooms into one to provide a good sized space with its own ensuite. By so doing, Robert would be able to charge more money and do less work. But despite his initial agreement, he's been having second thoughts. What it is, I've been to a um, sort of bathroom place or mm -hmm. design or whatever. Apparently they can make a, a shower room with a Where? loo in the green room. Where? Well, that's what I thought, but they, they've designed it and they can just about get it all in. You're I'll not, show you're you. You're not telling me the little cubby hole at the back and the, the bathroom in? Um, I, I couldn't believe it, but they have. With a human being? And a human being. <laughs> I don't believe it. Ruth is clearly unconvinced by the intended micro makeover. OK, so tell me the plan. This is where stud wall comes stud from. Stud wall comes along here, uh -huh. in line with that. Yes. And then I've sourced a very tiny loo, or WC. That's not going to leave much room for the door. I don't think you've got enough room here for a loo to go that way and to be able to access past it. Well, that's what I thought, but they've worked it all out and apparently it does. Where does the wash basin hang? Well, the wash basin goes there. I'm a very fat wash basin. I'm standing here. Oh, no, the loo's don't. there. You're Where's not, the space a, you're for not the a fat person? wash basin. And then the shower goes where? The shower goes in there. At the back. I think this might be good for dwarves, but I don't think it's going to be good for Snow White. I wasn't convinced to begin with, and then they showed it to me, and I thought, well, isn't that clever? Have you ever been in a boat? Not by choice. Oh, well, I have. And um, it's amazing what you can actually sort of see. Yes, but in. they are called the heads on a boat. That isn't something which I think is synonymous with a landlocked B&B in Greenwich. I'm going. And where the fuck is the bed going to go? Uh, the fucking bed is going to... No, fucking... I didn't say the fucking bed. I said, where the fuck is the bed going to go? It's different. <laughs> oh, Rob, come on. Come on. This is silly. But bathroom or no bathroom, will Robert be ready in time for another Most inspection? Though, we've got to make sure this is absolutely clean. Good Lord, Ruth. That is serious dust. Robert Gray has run St Alphage's guest house in Greenwich for the past five years. It's a bijou, three-roomed B&B, overflowing with its owner's character. But Robert is struggling. He needs the B&B to provide a financial backbone so he could continue his love affair with acting. If I was to lose the bed and breakfast, I, I don't know what I'd do. It's, it's a sort of way of life now, and um, I, I, I know I'd be devastated. Enter award-winning hotelier Ruth Watson. She's been given the task of reinvigorating St Alphages and guiding Robert to a more secure future. Ruth wants him to work on three key areas of the B&B. Presentation, marketing, and most importantly, the bathrooms. She suggested that Robert combine two rooms to make two en suites, but he's decided to go against her advice and plans to build a third bathroom in a cupboard. I think this might be good for dwarves, but I don't think it's going to be good for Snow White. I'm going. And where the fuck is the bed going to go? Bathrooms aside, Ruth wants to get Robert more guests by marketing the B&B. She suggested he offer guided tours of Greenwich, making the most of his acting skills and insider knowledge. So Robert's planned a whistle-stop trial run. Robert, being Robert, doesn't want his tour to be your traditional tourist fair. He wants to give Ruth a taste of the hidden treasures of Greenwich. Today, I'm going to show Ruth the Greenwich that not everybody knows about. 
First on the list, an old curiosity shop that epitomizes his quirky taste in interior design. There we go. Well, Ruth, here we are. This is very well named, isn't it, the junk shop? Well, it is, yes. In a previous life, I had a little antique shop. Did you really? I did. Well, this makes it even better because you can show people not just Greenwich and the sites, but you can take them around places like this and you can then show customers around where the best stalls are. Yes, who yes. Who to avoid, like the plague. Yes, where to go and where yes. Yeah. Shh. They might be listening. <laughs> Next up, Robert's hoping for divine inspiration in St Alphages, the church that gave his B&B its name. This is the only Hawksmoor church which is south of the river. But the gruesome history of the church isn't your average ecclesiastical tale. St. Alphage, he was a Saxon saint. He was murdered here by the Danes, you know, they took him hostage. Right. And he was martyred here in 1012. He's basically clubbed to death. To inject a little glamour into his tour, Robert takes Ruth to a secret museum dedicated to a local celebrity, Admiral Nelson. it taken to collect all this memorabilia because everywhere I look there is some Nelson. Nelson Iana. The gallery was established in 1974 and it's, and it's always maintained its connection with Nelson. And but it... what I really love about all this is the fact that this exists. I would not have a clue about this unless Robin brought me here. Well, and this is what you're going to be doing hopefully is... for your guests. Robin knows that yes they are bid most welcome. The Greenwich tour has been a triumph and could help Robert pull in more guests. But it won't make any difference if he doesn't get the basics right. I'm not entirely sure that Robbie's taking this quite as seriously as I'd like him to. We went on a tour and it was great fun, but it's only a tiny part of what a guest house owner should be providing. He has got to get this whole building sorted out. That's the real fundamental thing. He's running a bed and breakfast and he's got to get the rooms up to shape. I'm not convinced that jamming a tiny little bathroom into a tiny little bedroom is the right way to go. And I'm very concerned that if we get down to one of these guides who like high class, stylish, idiosyncratic places, that it might not fit the bill. I'd like to see Rob, um, if you like, taking his pedal off the farce and the fun part of this and actually getting a little bit more serious about the fact that this is a business, a small business, part of his life, but nevertheless, it should be run as a business. But a few days later, it seems change is in the air. Ruth has asked painter Mark Butler to create a stylish sign for St Alphages in keeping with its history. What I'd love you to do is, I've got a photograph here, an old photograph of the building, and it was built in about 1840, yeah. and it was originally a little corner shop. And what I'd love to do is to recreate the sign that it was above the shop, but we can't call it Franny Taylor's anymore because no. it's not. Yeah. But if we could just put number 16 yeah, not as not. it was, that would be fantastic. Yeah, we could do that, definitely. By the simple but prominent addition of the B&B street number, guests will finally know they've found the right place. Meanwhile, inside, the B&B is a hive of activity. Ruth's team are revamping the bathroom to make it an ensuite for the yellow room. They're also tackling the dark walls of the green room, where Robert is installing a tiny bathroom in the cupboard. As Ruth quite rightly said, people expect to have their own ensuite now, although she didn't agree with me on the fact that the smaller room, the shower room, was going to be big enough. I think it will, and um, let's live for another battle about that one. I can't wait. But how is Robert coping with life on a building site? So I am living in this delightful, um, well, that's not true, is it, really? I'm living in shit, basically, at the moment, and it is exhausting. The improvements are crucial. 
In just over a week's time, St Alphage's will be formally inspected to see if it can gain entry into the prestigious Special Places to Stay book. Not only that, the founder of the guides will carry out the inspection himself. One's always nervous because Alistair saw days coming, so um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nervous and concerned and I, I hope it will be all right. A week later, the intensive renovation work is complete and the new look B&B &B awaits inspection. By clearing up the front yard and painting a new sign in keeping with the style of the building, number 16 St Alphages has finally found its identity. Well, this is a huge improvement. We now know we're at number 16 and it looks very handsome on the fascia board there. I think the garden's coming along as well because it looks lush, it looks interesting, it's got style, but I can get through. The website with its cheap gay B&B &B tag has been replaced with a simple but stylish site that welcomes all. Hello. Hello Ruth, how lovely to see I'm you. Cashing <laughs> cheeks there, yeah. hi. Lovely this to see you. This is very good outside. It, and that lovely number 16. It's good, isn't it? But it wasn't just the B&B's presentation that Ruth identified as a problem. She thought the deficiency of ensuite facilities could be driving potential customers away. Now the once shabby shared bathroom has been transformed into a fresh and clean ensuite. The formerly claustrophobic green room is now light and airy, with a smaller bed that makes the most of the available space. The B&B &B is still packed with Robert's individual style, but now the facilities are finally up to scratch. At long last, St Alphage's is ready to be seen by the prestigious guidebook. Being in the book will enable Robert to target the kind of audience who'll appreciate his idiosyncratic style. In just a few hours' time, the guidebook's founder, Alistair Sorday, will arrive to assess the B&B, &B, including its contentious cupboard bathroom. Ruth has arrived early for a sneak preview. Robert quickly shows Ruth the room where his VIP will stay. So do come in, Ruth. Gosh, it just immediately feels bigger for not having those very dark green walls. And this, I imagine... Now, wait for it. I think this is a moment. Go for it. Deep breath. You're definitely going to have to say to any prospective guest that if they're booking this ring, just not single, but also slim. Slim, yes. I have to say, though, that you have changed the layout because it was never going to work with the door coming through here. You almost can only wash one hand at a time. The shower is surprisingly capacious. And I don't know where your knees would go, but I really think you need to give people a heads up on this, that it is a very single, single room. But you have proved the point. You have managed to squish a little shower and loo and basin. So could we call space. this a truce? All right. With Alistair Sorday's inspection looming, there's just time for Robert to show Ruth Alistair's room for the night. And this is the yellow room, Ruth. And more importantly, this is the yellow room en suite. En suite, yes. I think it's a triumph. I really, really do. It's a really nice sized bathroom. You've got everything you need in here. It's still got a nice little touch of the old Victoriana and your character with the photographs and black and white floor and things. And I think it's brilliant. I'm a bit nervous about this because, um, you know, it's... Um yet another inspection. You're putting me through my pieces, really, I Ruth, am. aren't you? Um... Look, most importantly, though, we've got to make sure this is absolutely clean. Good Lord, Ruth. That is serious dust. Do you know what I think I'd better do? Clean. I'd better get my feather duster out. So Robert launches into a last-minute clean-up, while Ruth heads to the centre of Greenwich to meet Alistair Sorday. She's anxious to find out what he looks for when deciding who'll gain entry into his prestigious guide. First of all, we're looking for character, yeah. real character, coupled with a bit of a touch of beauty, a touch of um, uh, authenticity. We love places which are, don't, are not, aren't pretending to be something they're not. We have to pick places we like, mm. and then we have to tell the truth about them. Mm. 
And I think the readers know that, and they, mm. they will go to the places they like the sound of. Is it going to be very difficult for Robert to get into your guide, do you think? Well, I think it's always difficult right. to get into our guides. I mean, really, there's a, I mean, there's a huge waiting list, and everything hinges on the inspection. Yeah. And the, the most crucial question of all on the inspection is, would you want to stay here yourself? You can't get into our B&B book mm. if you don't sign a pledge only to serve organic and or local food at breakfast where possible. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Now, that's going to be very testing for Robert because I'm not sure that at the moment that is something he does. Robert will clearly have to pull out all the stops if he's to impress Alistair, right down to the breakfast menu. The moment of truth for Robert's B&B &B has arrived. How very nice to see you. Have you had a good journey? I've had a perfect journey. Can I, ooh, where can I wipe my feet? Well, can you I can just wipe them on the floor. Oh, I'm going to make your floor dirty. Oh, no, really? Does it matter? <laughs> Come in. After yeah. signing in and enjoying a quick well, cup of tea, Alistair is shown upstairs to his room. <laughs> well, Alistair, do come up the stairs, and here we are. It's an opportunity for Robert to express his personality and that of his B&B. &B. Your room for tonight. Here we are. How pretty. You've got your en suite bathroom, en suite. Yes. I, I'm supposed yes. to call it en suite. Yes. I loathe it with do, possibly do you, more passion You're than the you. only person I've ever met I who said I cannot it. bear it. I cannot say it. I have to say en suite. Do you mind if I sit on the bed? Please do. It's a crucial part of the test. It feels very comfortable. Pillows. Now, I see you've not got a feather pillow. Um, I don't think we have, because some people get very funny about that. Do you have, the, do you have them the, available for people who like them? No. And Alistair, do come. Here, here's the bathroom, which we've just had um, re refurbed or something. That's nice. Yes. I like it. But it's not too clinical. Robert, why do you have boxing gloves? Well, I had to get that in I, for Ruth. I find this rather alarming. The B and B's decor seems to have made an impression on Alistair, but will the rest of the place? He's eager to find out whether Robert is prepared to take a greener slant on his breakfasts. People coming into our B and B hmm. book have to sign a pledge. Right, oh, this is, uh, yeah. This is probably news to you. Right. Are your, is your food sourced locally? Uh, no. Do you know where the food comes from? Um, I'm afraid just. Ah, we have, a, we have a, a, a sticking point. So Robert will have to show Alistair his ingredients can be bought locally or organically if he's to get accepted into the book. But the tour doesn't end yes. there. Anyway, oh. this is the blue. This is pretty. Alistair has to assess every room, and Robert is starting to feel nervous about the impending inspection of the green room's en suite. Yeah, you don't have to swing a cat in a bathroom. No, but we do no. get smaller. I mean, there are smaller bathrooms. I'm afraid we get very small. Small one. Yes. Well, Alistair, do come in. This is the green room, which is the single room. How nice. And, um... Yes. Very, very small. Very small. No sign of a bathroom. Where can you possibly have squeezed it in? Well. It has been a slight bone of contention, but um, we did manage to get one in, so it's here. Oh, good heavens. It's tiny. It's tiny! I could happily stay here, £50 a night. It is. No, that's, fine. that's absolutely fine. There seemed to be a meeting of minds, and I think perhaps um, it, it would be splendid to, to be in his book, really. The bathroom has passed muster, and so far, things seem to be so good. He spoke a lot about going green. I didn't know very much about it, but I didn't let on. He was rather so charmingly um, like a rabbit in the headlights. I mean, he didn't really know what I was talking about. Anything could go wrong on me, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But Alistair's insistence on a green breakfast may prove a sticking point. If breakfast is very bog standard, then I wouldn't put him in. Alistair settles in for the night, but the assessment of the B&B &B is far from over. Has Robert done enough to persuade him to put St Alphages in his book? You, you, you did want me to be completely truthful about I this. I do, yes please. For the past four months, Ruth Watson has been helping St Alphages B&B &B in Greenwich and its owner, actor Robert Gray, to stage a comeback. She's instigated a campaign of changes, including polishing up the B&B's presentation, introducing ensuite bathrooms, and helping Robert market St Alphages properly. 
Alistair Sorday has been assessing St Alphages to see if it's worthy of inclusion in his guidebook. The stage has been set. All that remains to be seen is whether the critic gives it a good review. After spending the night at the B&B, all that remains to be assessed is the quality of the breakfast. Alistair stipulates that B&B owners must serve an organic or locally produced breakfast if they're to win a place in his guide. So Robert has been on an emergency dash to the supermarket to stock up. Good morning, oh. Alistair. Good morning. Did you sleep all right? I slept like a log. Good. I really did. I promise you. Would you like some cereal? Well, this is... I'm going to... I'm going to completely throw you out of... No, no. If, can I start with cereal? Why not? Maybe but then the egg's going to go off, isn't it? Well, I can cook another one, can't I? <laughs> this is awful. In his nervous state, Robert has prepared the cooked breakfast too early, leaving his special guest with little choice. Alistair's anxious to find out how green Robert's egg and bacon are. Where did the eggs come from? I'm afraid the eggs came from the, the local shop. supermarket. But um, my friend um, HRH has, oh, yes. has supplied the bacon, you see. Good. Um, yep. He might get some points for finding Prince Charles's own brand of organic bacon at short notice, but he'll have to improve the offering if he's accepted into the book. Now, toast. Would you like some toast? How about... <laughs> Sorry, it's my agent. Can I have the toast afterwards? Hello. Breakfast hasn't really gone entirely smoothly, but Alistair's playing his cards close to his chest. Ruth has returned to find out whether the B&B &B has made it into the exclusive guidebook or not. Alistair, I um, hope you've had a jolly good stay and uh, we're waiting with a degree of apprehension as to whether you think um, number 16 is a worthy member of the Alistair Sorday Guide. Well, you, you, you did want me to be completely truthful about I this. do, yes please. And uh, I've told you that I like it and that I enjoyed Robert's company. So what I have to say to you is that um, I'd very much like you to come in the book. Oh. <laughs> well, isn't that marvellous? Well, thank you so much. Well, that's very sweet. And that means that you mustn't let the bathrooms get so dirty that you have to use a toxic mix of chemicals in order to scrub them clean. Well, that's Robert. true. <laughs> Th there is so much blandness and clonishness about the modern world that people who stand up and say, oh, this is me, take me or leave me, and do it with, with a sense of pizzazz and colour and taste, are precious to me. I knew I wanted to put you in the book within minutes of being here, actually. Not everything's perfect. It can't possibly be perfect. I mean, there are lots of little things I could tell you about, but in a sense, it's not for me to do because we're taking you as we find you. Well, congratulations, I, 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 um, and I take my hat off to you. And keep on flying your flag. Don't do anything anybody else does. Oh, well, that's very sweet. I don't sweet. think there's any danger of that. Is there? No. No. It's clearly an emotional moment for Robert and a resounding success for St Alphages. The key components of our write-up in the book will be Robert and the decor and the sheer personality of the place, because that's what comes out. And personality, publicly available, is in short supply. With the B&B &B in the guidebook, the future for St Alphages is looking rosy. All that remains is for Ruth and Robert to have one last chat before the curtain falls. I think we could say that's a resounding success. I think it is. I think it's fantastic. What do you feel that you've gained from all this experience? Well, I think it's been marvellous having a third eye, as, as they say. If I can take you right back to, I think, our first conversation, you did indicate that you'd like to get a bit more income from this place, and I hope that all these things will... Well, generate some I'll keep income. you informed on that. Yeah. I think it's been a huge success and I've thoroughly enjoyed having you in my little place here. Thank you, Robert. Listen, I hope it goes very well for you. Don't forget to keep your bushes pruned at all times. Bushes trimmed, I will always remember that. And showers clean. And showers clean. On behalf of number 16 and Greenwich, you have been a delight and it's been a pleasure having you and please do come back whenever you can. Thank you very much for the offer. OK, take much care. Much love. Take care. Bye-bye, <laughs> Ruth. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care.
Rob isn't an actor for nothing, and there's no doubt he uses humour on occasion to diffuse difficult situations. But I'm really delighted he's now included in the Alistair Sorday Guide. As long as he keeps the bathrooms clean and the bushes pruned, I think it's going to be a huge success.